This is Matt Hurt at Obsessive Viewer on Twitter. This is Tiny at Obsessive Tiny on Twitter. And this is ObsessiveViewer.com's The Obsessive Viewer Podcast. Hello and welcome to The Obsessive Viewer, where a weekly ish movie and tv podcast that covers a specific topic be it genre trope movie or show each episode you can find back episodes at ovpodcast.com find the blog at obsessiveviewer.com and you can like us on facebook and join the facebook group at facebook.com slash the obsessive viewer um and before we get into the episode this episode is sponsored by our good friends at horror movie yearbook from the midwest podcast network uh horror movie yearbook is a podcast that discover that discuss uh, horror movies in groups uh, based on the year that they were released um, and contextualizes them into the year that they were released in pop culture and current events and things like that. Their most recent episode was uh, their 14th episode. It was called The Class of 2005, which they discussed The Descent, The Devil's Rejects, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. And they uh, they have some fun interludes in between each uh, each segment, and it's a really fun podcast. You can check that out at uh, at HM Yearbook on Twitter and at HorrorMovieYearbook.com. dot com. That's when we graduated from high school. It is yes, yeah. we are class of two thousand five. Is I don't know why I said that. You you didn't you didn't go to the reunion, did you? No, no, me neither. I feel like our class officers kind of dropped the ball on letting everybody know a little bit. See, I don't think that they necessarily dropped the ball. I just think that no one went. Oh, really? I think, I mean, because, I mean, we had that Facebook group, and then I saw the pictures. There was, like, five people. I completely forgot. Like, I forgot about it. I really? I was planning to go and just forgot about it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I... Okay. Mm, yeah. Maybe I wasn't subscribe to the updates on the facebook group or something i know that i hid that shit immediately <laughs> <laughs> nice um yeah okay. i had no real interest in it but anyway yeah um yeah enough about our high school reunion guys um <laughs> Or lack thereof. <laughs> right. Um, also, at the top of the episode, I just want to mention that our friend Tommy Day from uh, from uh, By the Rights, who was on a few episodes ago, he is also a Patreon subscriber to us, so thank you, Tommy. But he is launching a uh, podcast called The Video Store, which can be found at Video Store FM on pretty much all social media. Um, uh, let's see. The, the Video Store is a group of friends from the Midwest talking about movies, TV, games, and nerd culture. Uh, you can find that at videostore.fm and on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at uh, Video Store FM. They have a teaser episode because it's already on iTunes. So, and God, like, uh, they have a teaser episode that's an introduction. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, and I'm really excited for it. But, uh, I say, I say that, oh, God, because, uh, their cover art is so freaking, gr- freaking good. Yeah. Like, look at it. I saw that. Like, how cool is that? Yeah. When I saw it, I was like, <sighs> Man, fuck you. Why are you know, right? how can he be so good right out of the bat? Yeah. Put a microphone in a shoe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. So uh put so on yeah. your contrarian hat. <laughs> oh, tiny. <laughs> oh man. You were having a good week. I was having a decent week. <laughs> and then Oh God. Oh, oh man. Oh, I said it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, check that out at videostore.fm. And uh, yeah, so today, Tiny, what are we talking about on the podcast? What are we doing? Win it all. Yes. That, that's a movie. I wasn't just saying it. Right. We should probably clarify because I don't know if many <laughs> people have that movie on the radar. Yes, it's the uh, latest Netflix original from mm-hmm. uh, writer, writer-director writer Joe Swanberg mm-hmm. and writer-actor Jake Johnson. True. Yes. You came prepared. Yes. Um, yeah. It's available on Netflix, as Tiny said. Uh, since uh, we've been kind of hectic over here at the Obsessive Viewer, Tiny bought a house. I am hosting panels and uh, saw and, and, and launching season two of Anthology, which, by the way, if uh, anyone who's listening who went to my panel at Indiana Comic Con, Tiny included, also Pat from The Nerds You're Looking For, and our frequent guest and friend, Robert Feckus, mm-hmm. uh, thank you guys for going. It was awesome. It was really good. Yeah, I'm. I'm thank you. Um, <laughs> I was terrified. Well, no, I, 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 after it was over, I was like, that is the most questions we've ever gotten at any live event we've ever had. I know. And it was like, it was funny because I was like, that's nice. I wasn't on stage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not one of the questions were, where's Tiny? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but the, yeah, thanks to the audience. I mean, it was really cool. And I know. They had really good questions and you had really good answers. Thank you. I totally, so background on this, um, I had spent the day, uh, walking around Indiana Comic Con with Fekus. Um, and also I wore a Nightwing shirt. 
Um, so a uh, Fekus in, when when I met Fekus there, um, he said, "Oh, nice Nightwing shirt." And then I missed an opportunity to say a perfect response. And then some guy at a vendor booth he said the same thing. Oh, nice Nightwing shirt. I missed it up again. But like each time, what I should have said was, "Yeah, I love Dick." Um, <laughs> Dick Grayson. Nice. Anyway, um, also uh, Pat from Nerd You're Looking For and uh former full-time co-host and eventually coming back someday maybe please um <laughs> mike white was there uh at the convention he had to leave before the panel but nice. uh, but yeah so i got to see mike <sighs> anyway um <laughs> so uh yeah so i had spent the whole day walking around indiana comic-con so i was like freaking exhausted and i procrastinated so much like i had some notes and a rough outline of the, how the panel was going to go but I didn't really prepare as much as I would have liked to. Um, so I like to think that I, when I was up there in my Nightwing shirt, I like to think that I, I, uh, I, uh, I kind of Nightwinged it. Hey! Ah. But yeah, if I posted the entire audio on uh, Anthology's RSS feed, so check that out at anthologypod.com as a special episode. Um, you'll notice 12 minutes into the one-hour panel, I, ran, I started asking for people to give questions because i ran out of notes <laughs> um, <laughs> oh man so yeah it could have been a disaster but it was a lot of fun and thank you to indiana comic-con and i hope they're not listening to this because i want to do something like that again <laughs> nice. um i might submit a panel idea to indie uh, indie popcon because i i think the dead the deadline's getting close i'll have to do that like tonight yeah um i don't know if i would do the same one or maybe something else is there a panel idea that you have tiny uh not really okay Give me, give me some time. I can okay. think of something. Okay. You have until the end of this recording. We don't have any time. Nope. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so anyway, so having said all that, thanks again, guys, for checking that out on anthologypod.com and at Indiana Comic Con. And uh, yeah, so um, I was going to bring up this whole thing. I This happened like two months ago, um, but something amazing happened. Have I brought this up on the podcast yet? The bank thing? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. The kind of the coolest thing that's ever happened to me in regards to the podcast is I was at the bank like two months ago and, uh, uh, I was, I was closing an account and then like, uh, one of the tellers like from, uh, the cubicle over, he came over and was like, Hey, do you have a podcast? Yeah. <laughs> the obsessive viewer. And I was like, Oh my God, I just got noticed with my voice. <laughs> um, granted, I think he heard me say my name. And also when I'd opened the account like two or three years ago, I had, uh, told him about the podcast. No, it wasn't when I opened the account. It was when I was getting the uh, cashier check for uh, the first Shark Tober in Irvington. Okay. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, so that was amazing. So shout out to the guy at the bank. Have I told um, you the follow up to that story? No. So I went to the exact same bank. Okay. And had forgotten about your experience. Seriously? And yeah, and uh, uh, Paige and I, we mm -hmm. basically opened a checking account together. Aww. Yeah, we're adults. Tiny. Um, and the, the the banker guy was, like, really friendly, and mm -hmm. he was, you know, doing his thing, and so we were kind of talking to him, and Paige mentioned that I have a podcast and stuff, mm -hmm. and then one of the other bankers just kind of came around the corner and was like, I heard I heard podcasts, and, like, and, and the other guy was like, yeah, he's really into podcasts, and he was like, what's your podcast, and told him, and he was like... Is your friend Matt live nearby, or was his even here? And I was like, "Oh yeah, he told me that you recognized his voice." That's and so awesome! I was like, "I'm the other voice." Yeah. <laughs> he was like, "Cool, man." And we talked about podcasts for a while. Oh, that's awesome! I can't, did I not tell you that? No. Damn. No, you did not. It was in the throes of moving. Yeah, and that's all that, and that so makes sense. I, it got lost in the shuffle. That's amazing. Yeah, so I had the same experience. That is so cool. Yeah. Oh man, and I know I kinda, he listens. I kind of piggybacked on your experience. Well, because I don't think he would have recognized my voice. Well, you never, you never know. Wow. Um. Yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I know that he has a lot of podcasts in his rotation, so I don't know when he will listen to this. But just saying, Patreon dot com slash obsessive viewer. Yeah. Totally joking. Totally <laughs> link that into J P Morgan Chase. Oh my God! Seriously. Yeah. Like, we can have like an like a whole thing. Anyway. Right. Um, <laughs> that's ridiculous anyway <laughs> um so anyway what are we talking about today we're talking about when it all when it all talked about that yeah so uh let's see do you want to hit us with the plot description on imdb tiny i'd be happy to did you already do that 
<clears throat> I did not. Okay, good. Go ahead. Eddie Garrett agrees to watch a duffel bag for an acquaintance who is heading to prison. When he discovers cash in the bag, he's unable to resist the temptation and winds up deeply in debt. When the prison release is shortened, Eddie suddenly has a small window of time to win all the money back. Yes, to win it all. Win it all. If, if you will. If you will. I wonder if that's where they got the title. I probably. Yeah. Um, that's, yeah. That's just clever. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, this is a Joe Swanberg movie, Tiny. Um, Mumblecore. Mumblecore is the word. That's a word. Yeah, it's kind of, a. Uh, a sort of style of filmmaking that's mostly improvised kind of uh kind of um improvised kind of filmmaking uh they don't really shoot with much of a script the most notable one that i remember of theirs uh that they did was drinking buddies back in 2013 which took a couple viewings for me to really warm up to i thought Mm -hmm. it was okay it's like john corman if he were talented john corman corman like john corman Corman, you remember filmmaker from like the 70s he would make movies for like a thousand dollars. Are you talking about Roger Corman? Roger Corman. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Corman. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Anyways, um, they also did Digging for Fire, which I never saw. And have you ever seen the show on Netflix called Easy? I haven't. Okay, it's haven't. it's an anthology show oh. um, about relationships, I think. But I've heard mixed things, hmm. um, which I think that's kind of that's kind of how the mumblecore movement is kind of. Uh, uh, met with is kind of mixed mixed results. Yeah. Um, the Duplass brothers kind of dabbled in the in that in this genre a little bit. Yeah. Um, some of their early stuff was kind of mumblecore ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they, I think they've kind yeah. of um, uh, moved on from that a little bit. Yeah, I think They're they've little... they've grown a bit. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah, and I think that they they did it well. Joe Swanberg, I, I appreciate his filmmaking. I know that mm-hmm. he did, um, uh, or he appeared in ah, that movie, um, Adam Wingard's movie. Hmm. I can't remember it. Um, mm. You're next. Um, oh yeah, yeah. He appeared in that, and uh, but I know that he's done some other things. He was he did uh, a segment on VHS. In VHS, the movie. Right, right. Um, yeah, I don't think I liked his segment either. <laughs> oh, really? If I'm not mistaken, I could be incorrect, but I think his segment was the, uh, in the first VHS, was the one that had a, it was the webcam one. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. made no goddamn sense. <laughs> um, I think it was that one. It might be the Newlyweds one. Let me check on that real quick. But anyway, yeah. um, so Joe Swanberg, I like. I liked Drinking Buddies, and I think that his uh, at his uh, what his strength is is having a um, having a story or, or a setting that has uh, talented actors that are playing on the chemistry between those actors and kind of a kind of a romantic chemistry between them. Yes. That's that's what. That's what I like about Drinking Buddies. I think he's more of like a collaborator as opposed to like a like a strict director. Yeah, he definitely does yeah. like a uh yeah, the the whole um the whole kind of premise of his filmmaking technique is kind of contingent on the collaboration of the different uh talents involved as well. Right. I'm totally uh stalling. Stalling to yeah. get to this. Um Okay, no, Ty West did Second Honeymoon. Joe Swanberg did thing, did the, uh, found for the, uh, uh, crap, what is it called? The, um, uh, webcam segment. Okay. Yeah, which I didn't like. Yeah, that was like the most underwhelming. It was. I think I didn't like it because I just, I thought the writing was silly. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, so what did you think kind of in broad terms, tiny about when it all, and if we need to, we could go into a spoiler section, but I honestly don't think there's really any need to, but we'll see where it goes. Okay. Yeah. I, I enjoyed this one quite a bit. Um, I think mm-hmm. I liked it more than drinking buddies. Um, I, I think drinking buddies was interesting for what it was, but I think it, it didn't, it didn't, thrill me i guess as as a viewer mm-hmm. but i think when it all was a little bit more conventional especially mm-hmm. than, than drinking buddies um i i really loved the it, it had the underdog feel to it really appealed to me and i think even though it was a little formulaic in that regard at least early on mm-hmm. um i i just think it it stuck to the formula well and yeah. it uh it it 
it hit that it hit that formula really well. So I, I appreciated that about it. Um, and I think it had a a slight it broke that formula with the ending, and I think that was kind of fun. And it um, I, I like the direction it took. Um, and there, there's something about Jake Johnson that I think is just really he's just like an everyman, mm-hmm. and it, like I just I feel like he doesn't act, I feel like he's not acting. I feel I, th- I think sometimes Jake he's just kind of playing Jake Johnson, mm-hmm. um, but but I'm fine with that for whatever reason. I think he's it, you know it might wear that wear out after a while and it'll stop being stop being appealing. But uh, mm-hmm. I'm 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 just really thrilled with what he does. There's there's something about him that I just love to watch. Yeah, I I agree with you on Jake Johnson for sure. He is I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. He is kind of like an everyman. He he kind of has this uh energy to him it's like it's like whereas like other actors if they had like a i don't want to say typecast or had anything that that would typecast them but had like a a particular shtick um like i'm thinking of like uh melissa mccarthy or michael Sarah or anything Mm -hmm. those are very much like traits that are like inherent to like their market marketability rather than what is their inherent personality right uh jake johnson just seems like hey i'm just this this is who i am this is the role that i'm doing and like you could almost i could see like if any if there are any detractors for him i could see them thinking that it's lazy or anything but i just i think it's a really uh uh really good um persona to to kind of capture for the type of types of roles he's taking totally yeah um, so yeah, so uh, did you have any more thoughts on that or did you want to, um, those are kind of the broad, the broad strokes of it really. Um, okay. yeah, sure. So, um, my, uh, broad thoughts on it are, I thought it was okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't, I wasn't too, uh, I wasn't too. I don't know if I'd say impressed by it. I just wasn't as taken with it as I was kind of hoping to be. Um, Jake Johnson was um, very uh, likable in kind of a uh, self-destructive kind of way. Um, And uh, the kind of compulsion of his character to dig himself deep um, throughout the movie, um, the compulsion of that was was handled pretty well. Cause like he, he finds the money in the bag and he's like, Oh, like he, it's kind of depicted as him. I don't know if, I don't know. Well, yeah, it's depicted as him having like a gambling addiction. Um, and having that kind of him finding that money and then making the, uh, decision to use it to, you know, win money to, you know, make a profit off of it. It's a very organic kind of, um, logical progression throughout the movie and that's like i never felt like oh he's he's getting in deep because he's he's you know the the script necessitated it felt very natural for him to dig himself deeper into the into the hole that he's in um so i liked that aspect of it and there's a whole sub uh uh subplot and uh, uh it's a it's a good part of the movie where um a good portion of the movie i should say where his brother uh, played by Jolo Truglio, uh, um, he like he starts working for him, and and they have this uh, this relationship there, uh, where oddly enough, Jolo uh, Jolo Truglio, am I? Do you know if I'm pronouncing Jolo that right? Truglio? That's what I would say. Yeah. yeah, he is kind of like the straight man in the movie. Yeah, um, and I thought that that was really interesting to see him because he's he's uh, usually kind of an out there kind of character. I mean, he's the high pitched guy and I love you, man. He's the, or I don't know if high pitch is the right word, but he's a squeaky voice guy. Um, he's, he's, uh, kind of a silly character in Brooklyn nine, nine. Uh, so it was interesting to see him play like the, the kind of responsible adult of this sibling relationship. Um, so I dug that about it, but by the end of the movie, um, I kind of felt like, and I think that this is indicative of the the whole mumblecore movement and the whole gu- mumblecore like subgenre, is that I felt like, I felt like as strong as the chemistry was between the characters and as strong as the dynamics were, um, and and kind of the improvised nature of the of the dialogue and everything, as strong as all that was, I feel like the 
the movie kind of petered out toward the end and it, it didn't really come to a point where, um, all of the, all of the plot lines were, were tied together in a satisfying way for me. The movie just kind of ends and it exists as, as it is, which I think is kind of a staple of this type of movie. But I think it's, especially in a movie like this, where, um, where it's maybe more plot driven than any other like mumblecore type of movie that I've seen. Um, I think that it's, it works to its detriment that it kind of, that it kind of just, uh, ends without, without much resolution. There's, there's resolution and everything, but, um, it wasn't as satisfying to me as what a kind of more conventionally created movie would have been. Yeah. Um, I echo a lot of that. I feel like the, the climax was like almost missing from the movie. I mean, yeah. you can't point to a specific moment and say that it was the climax of the movie. Um, but you know, the other kind of pieces of the puzzle were, were there and I think mm-hmm. those worked relatively well. Um, I completely agree about Joe LaTruclio. I was going to bring that mm-hmm. up as well. Nice. Um, I, I thought he was the standout performance. Mm-hmm. Um, as much as I love Jake Johnson and I had no problem with his performance in this, um, like you said, he always Joe LaTruglia always plays the goofy guy. Yeah, and that that's all I've ever seen him do, and he's awesome at that. You know, he's he's awesome. <laughs> um, he's awesome. Oh, that's that. perfect. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, and I wouldn't change those other performances, but it was really cool to just see him be the straight guy mm-hmm. and still be still be funny. I mean, I, he had some some great lines, um, and it like I totally. I think the best chemistry in the movie was him and Jake Johnson. Um, I totally bought them as brothers. Like oh, they, yeah. They had such a brother vibe to them. It was really well done. Um, so I love that. I feel like the female lead played by uh, Aislinn Derbez. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. She's she's a Mexican actress. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like she was kind of a fish out of water. Um, yeah. Just because I, I just feel like she's... She felt like it felt like she was foreign to the mumble core format. Okay, yeah, yeah. Which I, I'm not trying to sound xenophobic or anything because she right. happens to be a Mexican actress. Right. But that's not what I mean. I mean she just. I I feel I feel like she wasn't familiar with that style. Mm-hmm. I felt like she was she kind of clashed with Jake Johnson a little bit. Okay, you um, say that, but you kept like messaging me throughout the whole movie, saying like, when is she going to build this? fucking wall for us stealing a job um, from a white lady anyway and- <laughs> anyway i agree with you though uh, that was a joke he didn't message me yeah. at all she wasn't bad um, i'm not saying she was bad yeah. i just feel like she didn't she she didn't fit in she was kind of mm-hmm. the oddball she seemed like she was the maybe the only performer in the movie that was that was you know had had a uh, a script that she was following. Right. That's that's right. how her performance felt, which isn't bad. I mean, that's a conventional movie. Right. But in this, it it did kind of stick out in, right. in a negative way. Right. Um, and also, just I feel like the relationship between her and and Jake Johnson's character felt, um, not necessarily perfunctory, but like it felt like it was playing second fiddle to the relationship between him and Jolo Truglio. Mm-hmm. Like that was like the dominant kind of, uh, um chemistry and, and dominant relationship between the two. Like there are moments between those two where like he is Jake Johnson is, is in a desperate situation and he's, he's pleading with Jolo Truglio and Jolo, Jolo Truglio is doing his, his, he's reacting to it. Like these scenes where they're, they're kind of really like high energy, very angry and, and pleading, um, and everything. Those are like some of the most, like, they're like the standout performances and standout sequences of the whole movie um, for me. And that also goes with uh, Keegan-Michael Key is another actor that's in the movie. He mm-hmm. plays um, Jake Johnson's sponsor and they have some really good scenes together. Um, but yeah, it's st- it still felt like it was just kind of strung together in a, in a way that I feel like it would have benefited from. And also, <laughs> I mean, for all I know, this movie could have been scripted out and, and meticulously shot off of the script. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm just, it feels like the mumblecore type of movie yeah. and all the improv- improvisation and everything. I agree um, with the relationship thing. Yeah. I, I feel like, I think it was important that his character had a personal relationship that he was working on really closely mm-hmm. um because you know it's kind of about him growing up a little bit and yeah. taking responsibility for his life and you know going towards a more traditional lifestyle and him enjoying that 
mm-hmm. and wanting to do that. And so it makes sense that he would be building a personal relationship, but I think it would have been, I think it would have made a little more sense or maybe been a little more or a little less conventional if he had like early on in the movie, he has a fun scene with his nephew. Mm-hmm. He's kind of like having fun with his nephew and he goes over to dinner with yeah. his brother's house. I think it would have been cool if he had gotten like really close with his nephew mm-hmm. and like, um, you know, worked on that relationship and the relationship with his brother and something would have gone wrong there. And that would have been the conflict. Yeah. Um, as opposed to the, the actual, like the romantic relationship that mm-hmm. was a little forced and a little, a little goofy. And I, I think, I think it would have just been, it would have been more fun if it was, or, or maybe a little more natural. Mm-hmm. If it had been with his brother and the nephew, I definitely see what you mean, and I and I do agree to an extent. I have a counter to that though, mm-hmm. but um, I do agree because that would make it more of a familial thing. It's mm-hmm. like a family thing, um, which I think would have been would have strengthened the kind of tone and the the storyline of the movie in general, um, really well. But my kind of counter to that, or my my counter example to that, is that um, I think it would have been it probably would have worked better in the movie that they could have had the, the romantic relationship as well, but had it be throughout the movie, more of a flirtatious kind of like, um, slow build thing. Like, mm-hmm. cause the kind of whole, like you said, it, the whole movie is kind of about him growing up and everything. And he's in this relationship throughout a lot of the movie, most of the movie. Um, I kind of feel like it would have been better if, if the kind of journey that he takes was more him overcoming, his issues and his his uh compulsions and and his his screw ups and everything, and then like the reward is him getting the the relationship um yeah, or it's like that's when he's you know he's changed himself enough that it's like okay now he can handle an adult relationship, but i mean I mean we're kind of splitting hairs here it's mm-hmm. the the movie itself the journey that the in that the uh the journey that jake johnson's character uh takes throughout the movie. I, I enjoy it. I, like I, I enjoyed it um, and thought that it, it worked well for what they were going for or the progression of the character worked well for the story being told and, and it followed a logical progression for me. Um, I just felt like the ending just didn't, didn't, it didn't stick the landing. It didn't wrap up in a, in a satisfactory way for me. That's fair. That's yep. fair. Yeah. Yep. Uh, anything else? <laughs> <with it>? Um, <laughs> No, I mean, I, I kind of dug it. It was fun. Like, I, I again, I wouldn't. It's not going to be a top twenty or a top ten. Sure. Um, but yeah, it was. It was a fun movie. I, I have kind of hit or miss mixed feelings on the whole mumblecore subgenre. Mm-hmm. Um, it, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not. Um, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to pin down for me. But this, this was a, this was a good one. I think I, I enjoyed this one personally. Nice. Now, have you seen uh, Digging for Fire or Happy Christmas? I saw Happy Christmas. Okay. What did you I think of that? Was, it, was that a similar buddies. style? Um, yeah, I I I don't remember it that much to be honest. Okay. Um, so it obviously I can't I can't uh, imagine that it was all that great, mm-hmm. given that I don't really remember it very much. But uh, you know, I'm always the the charm and the appeal of the movies is mm-hmm. is the chemistry, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. You know, these are all actors who kind of know each other and they're used to working with each other and, and you know, that's, that's a good thing, mm-hmm. but that, that's usually the charm of the movies. And that's what I tend to remember. I tend to remember like in happy Christmas, Melanie Linsky and Anna Kendrick were really great together. Nice. But I don't necessarily remember specifics. I don't remember sure. Yeah. You know, all the details of the relationships and all the, the, the dialogue and all that. But I remember how great some of the actors were together. Nice. That's so. kind of how I feel about drinking buddies a little bit. Yeah. Like, yeah. I remember some parts of it, but I don't remember like, any standout moments. And I think that that's, there's like no plot to that movie. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. And it's all about relationships and I, and I appreciate what they did And the, I kind of feel like that type of movie is kind of like, kind of like watching like a, a stage production or like mm-hmm. a play that doesn't have much of a plot. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it kind of has that feeling where it's, it's more about the performance rather than, um, like it, it's like seeing like a live performance on on a film, mm-hmm. but I think where when it all differs from that is that like that has scenes in the movie that are going to stick with me as as things that I'll remember like oh yeah when it all that was really good I remember that scene with Joe Trulio and and Jake Johnson where they're in the office and and uh, and uh, there's that pivotal scene and I I kind of uh, 
feel like, yeah, that's uh, that's a step up for that type of movie. Totally. And uh, spoiler, do we need to do spoilers or not? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess that's our review of Win It All. Um, it's a Netflix original that's on Netflix right now, so you can check it out. Um, yeah, I, I would, would you recommend it? I would. I think, I think, I think that, I think the, the subgenre will appeal to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I would, uh, I'd recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it for like a rom-com fan or straight comedy fan, but if you want, um, a pretty, um, kind of dramatic comedy movie that isn't so like ha ha funny, but more kind of contemplative, um, and situational. Uh, I would, uh, I'd recommend checking it out. So that's Win It All, and it is on the Netflix. Hey, internet. My name's Tommy Day, and I'm here to announce a brand new podcast called The Video Store. The Video Store is the Midwest's premier Kim Trail podcast. All Pokemon fan fiction all the time. We're going to track down Jim Varney, a.k.a. Ernest, and find out where's he been all this time. Oh, wait. No, he's dead. The video store is a group of friends from the Midwest talking about movies, games, TV, books, all kinds of just general nerd culture. We're going to have guests, like super famous guests. You won't believe the guests we're going to have. The show is going to premiere very soon. You can find us at videostore.fm and on all of the social media platforms at videostore.fm. Thanks for stopping by the video store. And remember, be kind, rewind. So, Tiny, we're going to kind of... uh... That was a kind of a short review, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to do kind of a extended potpourri segment. Totes. Yes. So, uh, do you want to get us uh, kicked off here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I at the new house, I have like kind of my own area for like the nice. first time uh, since nice. I've been together with my fiance, and so mm-hmm. I really like dove into that pretty hardcore over the nice. past like two three weeks. Um, over, in two weeks, I've watched like eleven movies, which is pretty decent um, compared to what I was doing, anyways. Um, that's so awesome. Yeah, it's got, almost like you're not back to normal. <laughs> that's, that's, that's terrible. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Please, I hope Paige never listens. <laughs> um, no, it's 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 good because it it kind of I don't know. Yeah, it, it's good for you. Totally has that feel. Yeah. So yeah, I got I got a couch down in my my man cave now. So I was sitting on a lawn chair. Mm-hmm. before so that's that's been great um so to kind of dive back into the whole watching movies all the time thing mm-hmm. um i really like it's it's funny i really dove into like really simplistic like big budget action movies nice. and that's kind of been like my way back into that i guess um like it's it's been rare over the past year for me to like watch a movie during the week mm-hmm. but i've watched like four during the week over the past couple of weeks. That's so. so awesome. Yeah. Um, but I haven't really wanted to watch like, you know, something that makes me think. Right. <laughs> um, so it's just been funny, but it's, I've been like kind of really enjoying them. Okay. And I, I'm almost embarrassed at the movies I've enjoyed <laughs> kind of a lot, not a lot, but sure. More than I should. So the movies that I've enjoyed more than I should, that I'm almost embarrassed of, <laughs> uh, Warcraft. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, the Magnificent <laughs> Seven. Okay. The remake, yeah. Uh, War Dogs, sure. uh, Suicide Squad, um, and Terminator Genesis. Oh boy! Yeah. Okay. Like those were mostly critically and audience panned movies mm-hmm. for the most part. But I don't know. Maybe it's just like the place I'm at huh. right now. But I I kind of dug the movies a little bit. Like, had you not seen Terminator Genesis? I had not seen it. Really? I had not seen it. Um, and, and it's not just me being crazy because mm-hmm. I, there's two other movies I watched that were critically an audience panned mm-hmm. uh, that I didn't like at all. Assassin's Creed oh, okay. was terrible. Interesting. And uh, Jack Reacher, Never Go Back. Oh, interesting. Was not, was not good. Oh, I've Very heard that and I know you're, you're a fan of the original. Love the original. Huh. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll start with Jack Reacher, Never mm-hmm. Go Back, um, which is an awful title. Yeah. That's terrible. <laughs> um, 
not because of Justin Bieber. Right. Um, wasn't that the name of the documentary? Um, uh, never. Uh, was it never back down? I'm going to look that up because, Who cares? because the Lonely <laughs> Island movie, uh, pop star, never uh, stop stopping, never stop, never stopping. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to look that up because it's yeah. never say never. Never say never. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, never go back to terrible subtitle. It's just <laughs> super generic. Um, and unfortunately, that's how the whole movie was. Oh, that or sucks. The meat of the movie was very generic. Um, mm. I feel like they carried a little bit of momentum from the first movie. Mm-hmm. And the first half was, was really mysterious. And I think it was true to the character and true to the genre. But the second half, they just completely lost it. Um, in the climax of the movie, you know, obviously there's going to be the big boss fight, if you will, mm-hmm. where, you know, Jack Reacher is fighting the main villain throughout the movie. They get into their big fight, and, you know, you have your conclusion. Well, literally, the sidekick for Jack Reacher throughout the movie, played by Kobe Smulders, mm-hmm. um, she was standing there watching with a gun right next to her. Oh, she really? She could have just picked up the gun and shot the guy in the head, and that, that was That is... It. Oh, that is, yeah, that is so... Really egregious. Yeah. I was really, I was like, really, we're doing this? Mm. Um, And it just, it just had such, the second half was just super generic. Um, Because in the first movie, I feel like they, they set up this scenario really well, Mm -hmm. where like the villain was, the villains was kind of like this international, um, what's it called? Like a, like an international crime syndicate. Okay. It reminded me of like Spectre in 007. Okay. That's what they kind of established with the first movie. Sure. And the second movie is just completely not, not existent. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. So I wish they would have carried that thread a little bit better Dang. and they didn't. So I was just really disappointed. That's a bummer. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they will make a second or third one or anything, but would you, would you revisit, would your, would your uh, fandom of the first one or your enjoyment of the first one make you check out a third one if they do it? Definitely. I mean, okay. I definitely want to check it out. Um, and, you know, this one had... Uh, did Edward, Z- Edward Zwick directed it? So, I oh, mean, like, yeah. they have a big director, and mm-hmm. I don't know. I was just really disappointed. So, you know, I would say, oh, you have to get a good director and a good team for the third one, yeah, but mm-hmm. I'll definitely see it, but I I don't know. I I was just really disappointed with this one, and... I don't know. It feels like they kind of lost what the character was. Okay. So, we'll, well see. That's disappointing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Should I, should I go next? Go for it. Okay, sweet. So uh, what should I bring up first? Okay, so this is kind of a unique thing. Um, it's not necessarily a movie or show that I watched. Um, but recently, a couple weeks ago, or a few weeks ago, I, I can't remember when it was, um, I saw a live performance at, in Indianapolis. Um, and the reason I'm bringing it up is, uh, it, the reason I'm bringing it up is that it, that it is something that I think our listeners would really enjoy. Um, it's called, it's Defiance Comedy. It's, uh, this group of uh people i'm gonna bring them up on facebook here um it's this it's this comedy outfit here in indianapolis um that uh their in their information on on uh the facebook says the comedy group that brought you the innovative live episodic stage sitcoms jesus is my roomie and mom and pop porno shop (laughs) um so i went and saw the kind of their whole thing is that they they do live performances of like sitcoms that they write so they have like like single setting sitcoms that they they write and then they perform live for an audience in each performance at least the performance i went to is uh is two episodes with one inter intermission in between in between the two um and the <laughs> the show that I saw was called Spaceship to Nowhere. <laughs> it was a uh, Star Trek kind of parody where it's like this group of uh, this crew of of uh, this spaceship crew. They go on adventures and stuff, and it's like the set is the bridge of the of the SS Defiance, and it's. It was so much fun. It was <laughs> such a freaking blast. The the guy who played the um the captain, he had this energy like he kept he kept mispronouncing words and he kept he had like a, an inflection that was parodying um um uh William Shatner from Star Trek uh the original series. But <laughs> 
but not in a way that felt forced or anything. It just felt it felt so natural and uh, like I mean, he, like everyone, everyone in in the production was just on fire. Um, and they had a uh, an actor who apparently, like, I'm not as plugged in with the local theater scene or anything, but they had an actor who is like one of the like most like well-respected actors or he's one of the most sought after actors in the local Indianapolis, uh, uh, theater scene. (laughs) They had him in it and they, uh, like he just played multiple roles, but they were like very, like he was mostly just red shirts, um, (laughs) who he'd get, he'd get killed immediately. And like in the opening credits, like they had opening credits to play, uh, throughout it. And, um, or like at the beginning of each, of each, uh, quote unquote episode um and had like introducing and then the guy's name and it's i it was it was a lot of fun it nice. was it was such a blast um and they're planning on doing um episodes three and four around christmas i believe okay so yeah i recommend going to uh facebook.com slash defiance comedy and giving them a like and uh and checking some of their stuff out because and they've had other um shows um in like each title that they did was like, I was like, these are all things that I really want to see. <laughs> like, this is like, these are things that are right in my wheelhouse. Like, I think they had one that was called a uh, hall and oats, um, uh, hall space, the, like hall spelled H a U L and oats with an E, uh, between the T and S, um, hall and oats, uh, time travel, private detectives, I think. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just, it's, it was such a fun, uh, such a fun uh, experience. So I definitely recommend checking out uh, um, uh, Defiance Comedy and uh, Facebook.com slash Defiance Comedy and on Twitter at Defiance Comedy. Um, it's, it was, it was a lot of fun. So I recommend checking them out. That sounds awesome. Yeah. I was, I was really impressed. Um, cool. Yeah. And I also, I, I wore my, uh, a new shirt that I had um, that I was super excited about. Um, and I didn't really plan it for this but uh like i just happened to wear a shirt that says uh it has a picture of the space shuttle and at the top it says science and at the bottom it says because you can't pray this shit into space (laughs) so awesome i was like yeah my wardrobe matched that's awesome yeah so so yeah so that's defiance comedy uh check that out if you're in indianapolis nice yeah um so i wanted to talk about one of the movies that i a lot of people didn't like, but I did. Sure. Um, and I, I think the most controversial is probably Suicide Squad. It's, okay, wait, wait. Uh, okay, so you liked Suicide Squad? I kind of like Suicide Squad. Really? I know. Okay, let's let's I talk know. about this. So to get it out of the way, I have to acknowledge that it's it's really not a good movie, mm-hmm. or it's not a great movie by any stretch. Um, there are plenty of things, plenty of issues I had with it. I mean, mm-hmm. it, the script was pretty lazy Mm -hmm. um i think when you were talking about it you mentioned that one or basically two characters literally just come out of nowhere Mm, yep i Uh mean they're just like oh and this guy it's it's it was really bad yeah i was like are you gotta be fucking kidding me Mm -hmm. it was it was really bad um like one of them didn't even have a backstory (laughs) he just (laughs) showed up i mean it was a car drove up while someone was in the middle of a speech they're like oh yeah and this guy and he gets out, and he's part of the Suicide Squad. Yeah, I, and he he says something or does something that's so over the top misogynistic. Yeah, something like he doesn't he punch a woman in the face or something or I think so. Something I don't know. He Ugh. was beyond forgettable. Yeah. So yeah, that that was really bad. Mm-hmm. Um. So there's there's plenty of things to crap on. It was a it was a relatively weak plot. Mm-hmm. and all that i mean there's a lot of stuff that you can you can point to that's not good about it and i'm really not going to try to defend the movie that much but i really love these characters i kind of loved them i mean okay some of them yeah were, like some of them were dumb like uh, um the ones we mentioned earlier and like some of them just had so little to do mm-hmm. that they were lost in the shuffle and you know other other team movies aka marvel mm-hmm. uh didn't have that problem really right so it's 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 a, a structure and a production and a writing issue um but like i i feel like margot Robbie mm-hmm. was like freaking perfect as harley quinn i loved her like she okay. was awesome like she sure. made me laugh tons of times mm-hmm. she was nuts and like really sexy and hot and 
Well, I thought she was like a perfect Harley Quinn. I mean, I, I thought she absolutely nailed it, and I enjoyed the hell out of her performance. Okay. Um, Will Smith, while I feel like he was slumming it a little bit here, yeah. um, and he, I really didn't get his character that much, mm-hmm. I thought he was a pretty good, like, kind of a team builder leader kind of guy. Like, mm-hmm. he, he for whatever reason, knew how to react to, like, Harley Quinn's crazy and yeah. keep these people in check a little bit and kind of be a leader. Again, you know, he's no Iron Man. Mm-hmm. You know, he's no Captain America. Um, but I, I thought he was fine. I thought he did fine. Um, and I can finally say for the first time ever that I really enjoyed Jay Courtney. <laughs> okay. Because he is such a run-of-the-mill actor. Yeah. Every time I see him, I'm like, oh, that's that Jay Courtney guy. He was in this movie. Mm-hmm. Like, he's just so mediocre, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like, I just, I've never been... Like, he's fine. Mm-hmm. He's fine, but he's just never noteworthy. And he gets into these huge franchise movies... Yeah. Like he he was in uh, he was in Terminator Genesis right and oh he, God and he was Jay Courtney like he was playing Jay Courtney that's right I know like he got like this iconic role mm-hmm. he played uh, Reese mm-hmm. uh, in Terminator it's like that's a huge role yeah and he's just Jay Courtney like he was he was Damn. completely unimpressive very vanilla huh. but in this movie he was a nutbag and he was using this crazy Australian accent. And yeah, his character had no business being in this movie. Right. And he was off the wall. But I thought he was really goofy and he had some great lines and he was he was playing a character for once. Mm-hmm. And I thought he did a pretty decent a pretty decent job. Okay. And he was fun. So um Jared Leto was uh, he he did more than play with the lion. He was a little over the top as the Joker. Yeah. Um and and the the costume department went overboard with the Joker. That's a given. Yep. Uh, yeah. But I won't go ahead. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not going to defend the movie. I will not call it a good movie. Mm-hmm. I will say that I enjoyed it. Okay. I sure. enjoyed it. I would probably give it like a five and a half. May maybe pending a rewatch, a six out of ten. Okay. Which I think is pretty generous. I think most people did not give it that high of a rating. Yeah. Um. So I'm, you know, I'm not going to give it a seven or an eight or a mm. nine out of ten. It's sure. it, it's not deserving of that. But sure. for whatever reason, I just enjoyed it. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. Um. I di- just didn't. I that's, I. that's fine. Really aggressively did not like that movie. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, Margot Robbie was was fine, I guess. But I think that, and I said this previously on the podcast, but um, the strength of the movie i don't even want to use that strong a term um the watchable part of the movie was will smith and um oh man i can't remember his name um joel kinnaman yeah joel kinnaman who played um uh, rick flag yes um they're they're the way that they kind of uh butted heads with each other Mm -hmm. i thought that was that was that was something that if they would have had if they would have done more things like that and and kind of you know had strengthened that a little bit it would have been a more watchable movie for me yeah but yeah yeah it's just ah there's at the end of the, like toward the climax of the movie there's or like midway through the movie i don't remember the timing of it there's a thing that happens and then you they cut away from it as if there's supposed to be some big mystery surrounding what happened in it it's like in a subway and then later in the movie, they cut back to it as if it's a big reveal about what happened. Yeah, that was dumb as hell. But it, the thing that it was, the thing that happened was the thing that they cut away from. Like nothing, nothing about it was something yeah. that's like there was no reveal. It was, yeah. God damn it! <laughs> it was a sloppy ass so, movie. So so stupid. Yeah, it was. It was like it, it was like a clown juggling 12 things Mm -hmm. and halfway through he drops five of the things yes and the clown had a damage tattoo on his forehead (laughs) 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 oh man yeah that was really bad yeah oh god yeah Yeah, that movie god damn it yeah um i can't wait to talk about wonder woman and justice league this year (laughs) anyway um yeah i yeah i I just i just had fun with it for whatever reason and that's that's fair that's totally fair yeah um i'm glad that you had that experience because i just i just didn't i I wish i could (laughs) have um oh man 
Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> off the top. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, should, should I go next? Please. Okay. So I rediscovered my love of something. Um, so recently on Netflix, they released the new season, new season reboot of, um, uh, MST 3K. Yes. Uh, yes. With, with, uh, uh, Jonah Ray, um, as a lead, um, I can't remember who does the voices of the robots. I know that Tom Servo is voiced by uh, Baron Vaughn, and a uh, Crow T robot is voiced by Hampton Yount. Um, the, okay. They're both uh, comics, and yeah, so so I kind of uh, watched the first couple episodes on a whim, um, not necessarily on a whim. I, I just kind of wanted to have something playing in the background, and I just kind of I was hit with this nostalgia. Because I haven't watched MST3K, like the original, like in a long time. Um, I remember you and I, when we worked nights as security guards, we did our job. Uh, neither <laughs> one of us worked for that company anymore. Um, no. Um, we, like, I remember when we, I mean, we would watch MST3K. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember specifically one episode we watched was the Skydivers was the movie. Okay, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like, cause I remember you kind of went through a thing where you, where you bought a bunch of the box yeah. sets. Yeah, and like I remember like liking it when when we watched it, but like watching this new iteration of it, and uh, and kind of seeing this this new take on it, uh, just kind of reminds me of like like growing up as a kid. Like we would watch, like I I know my dad would watch it, and we would kind of watch it like one when, when he was watching it, mm-hmm. and like. I don't know. It's just kind of, it stuck with me. Like I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed watching, uh, them rip on, riff on, uh, terrible movies. Um, and then also I remember as a kid just really being annoyed that they were taking up part of the screen. Yeah. Um, like that, that aggravated the hell out of me. That's totally Matt Hurt. Yeah. Oh yeah. (laughs) But I just remember just having fond memories of watching the original and, uh, and I mean, I'm no expert on it. I'm I'm no expert at all on it. Mm-hmm. But um I'm I'm really enjoying this iteration of it. I think that it's a lot of fun. I was a little nervous about Jonah Ray. Um Me which, too. Yeah, which I don't know if that's necessarily fair to say. Um because I mean there's nothing wrong with him. I just think that in terms of like the Nerdist podcast, I think he's kind of the not weak link of it, but he's kind of the one that I don't I don't relate to as much. I'm not he's a hipster douchebag. There you go. Yeah. I mean, he is. He is. He's not on funny. Right. Yeah. He's a funny guy, but yeah. he's, yeah, there's not as much relatability. Yeah. Uh, with him, with me. So, um, this is his, you know, this is his comedy styling and everything in, in, in the show. And I mean, it works really well. Nice. Um, so I watched a, the first couple episodes of that and I also had a conundrum that, and I want to, I might put a poll in the Facebook group. I should put a poll in the Facebook group. Do it. Kind of forgot we had that. Um, <laughs> so my question to the listeners here and join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the obsessive viewer. Join the Facebook group. I don't think I've seen the guy from the bank, um, on, in the group. That's what interesting. The hell? I know, right? Um, I'm sorry for closing my account. Um, <laughs> no, um, anyway, uh, it also helps that I don't even, I didn't say his name. Anyway, um, <laughs> So my question is watching an episode of MST 3K the entire episode is an entire movie that they're riffing on do you count that as your movie as a movie watched in your movies watch list I don't know I know I had it's so gray such a gray area Yeah um I you know I would say no because you're not you're not watching the movie. Mm-hmm. You're watching them watching the movie. You are. And technically that's an episode of mm-hmm. television, not a movie. True. However. Yes. It- <laughs> <laughs> I love the I love the yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> what the hell are you going to say now? No, um however, isn't that the same thing as saying like, like if you and I were to sit here and watch, um, some stupid movie and make fun of it just on our own, we go see 
the fate of the furious and we giggle and laugh and we make remarks to each other about, oh, he just said that about this. And that's that's such a funny thing. <laughs> isn't that the same concept as watching something with – isn't it, is it the same concept as watching a commentary track? Because you would count that as watching the movie. We would, wouldn't we? Yeah. But there is a visual aspect to MST3K mm-hmm. because they take up part of the screen. They, which they you, do. Which you hate. And they do. Yes. <laughs> Although I'm, I'm warming up to it. Nice. Um, and there's the breaks. There are they breaks goof off. in interludes. So it is a different dynamic. It's true. You're not participating in MSC3K while you are participating in going to see the Fate of the Furious where you goof off. And part of that participation means you have to watch the movie. So you are watching a movie. But you're also watching them. You have to watch the movie in MST3K to under to put their jokes in context. Exactly. So that is a that is a humdinger. It is. And and like I can tell you that yes, I know about um a movie where a lizard came to life and I know a movie about a search for Bigfoot that happened to like in a special bond between Bigfoot and a kid. Santa Claus on Mars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Plan 9 from outer space. Right. I mean, uh, Monos Hands of Monos Fate. Hands of Fate. It's a classic one. Yeah. The Skydivers. <laughs> um, so it's it's a tough call. It's a tough call. Um, I, I'll i tell you what. I'm fine with either one. If you okay. want to include it, go ahead. If you don't, don't. I think that this is a issue for the listeners call to Call your congressman. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, no, I will put a poll in the Facebook group. Um, and I might actually isolate the audio of this and put that uh, separately in that poll cool. just so if I can, I don't know if I can do that, but, um, yeah, I, I'll definitely, we'll, 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 we'll report back. Totally. Um, but I will say that I am enjoy- I am enjoying this iteration of, of MST 3k. Um, Felicia Day and Patton Oswalt are also in it. And, uh, and it's, it's just, it's just a fun show. It's nice. It's a lot of fun to watch them you know, do their thing and it carries on the spirit of, of MST three K that I have fond nostalgic memories of. I am really happy to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really, uh, curious to see what you think of it whenever you get around to it. I, I definitely will be. Um, nice. speaking of that, mm-hmm. uh, you let me use your Hulu login. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Yes. Um, also on that note, before you continue first, are are you switching to your, Sort of. Okay. Before I do that, before we do that, first, um, if you're a fan of MST3K and riffing on movies, check out Cinemaside, our buddies over at Cinemaside. Totally. Uh, yes. They actually just made a big announcement. They are going to be at Chicago Pop Culture Con 2017. They were actually invited to make a guest appearance there. Awesome. Um, so go check that. That's November 25th and 26th, uh, 2017. Check them out at uh, cinemaside.com. Cinemaside, C I n e m a c i d e dot com nice yes okay so anyway uh yeah hulu account yes. which yes you, you talking about msc3 made, made me think of hulu because they have some of the old episodes on hulu they do they don't have every one because right like 10 seasons yeah, yeah it's also, a lot of stuff yeah. um but they have quite a few episodes on hulu like 44 i think nice that's they also have a bunch on awesome. netflix oh do they original. really yeah that's awesome that's mm-hmm. great to hear um but on hulu uh this isn't really a potpourri yet entry that okay. i want to mention but i'm about a little more than halfway through 11 22 63 mm-hmm. um i have been i've been watching that and i've been trying to if i take on a new show or start watching a show I don't want to start something else unless I finish that first. <laughs> yeah, so, I know. I go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to finish 112263. Not that it's like a chore cuz I am enjoying it. Right. Um, but I'm trying to finish that before I start something else. Sure. So, there's some other stuff I want to jump onto, MST3K being one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, uh 13 answers or whatever that one's called the 13 reasons why there you go that yeah. everybody's talking about on netflix which yeah it sounds kind of stupid to me but right apparently it's good mm-hmm. um so yeah there's some stuff i want to check out and eventually i'd, I'd like to share my thoughts on 11 nice um so i will report back with that sweet um, um how are you watching hulu are you using you're using a roku using the roku yeah okay so my question for you is that like is that a roku box or like a roku stick it is a box. Okay. So when you go into Hulu, does it just take you right to Hulu? 
Yes. Okay, so it doesn't prompt you for like a profile? No. Okay. Okay. Did you create one for me? I created one specifically oh, for really? you. Oh, really? Yeah. And like, so like I have one for, for me, for my brother, and for you. Oh. And then I loaded up mine because I guess mine's the default. And I kept like looking at them like, it said like resume episode five of 112263. Oh. And I'm like, tiny? <laughs> I think, did you also watch Pawn Stars? Damn. No, I didn't. Oh, okay. That may I have been not. my brother. Yeah, that's probably right. Anyway. Um, yeah. So, so I was going to, I was like, I, I assume that that was the case. It just yeah. didn't prompt you for it. I will look into that. It you don't have to. It's okay. not a big deal. <laughs> I love Roku, but mm-hmm. it is ve- it's it's a pretty bare bones platform. Oh yeah, it's not flashy at all. They mm-hmm. don't have bells and whistles. Gotcha. And so that's that's probably why there's no mm-hmm. like prompts. Um, one of the only one of the only uh, channels, if you will, mm-hmm. um, that's kind of flashy is Netflix. Oh, okay. Um, it's it's nice, but even like HBO Go, mm-hmm. it's very, very vanilla. bare bones. Bare yeah. bones. Yeah. On Hulu, when you use when you use Hulu on the Roku, does it take a while to load? No. No. Interesting, because like I have, I use my PS3, uh, which by the way, guys, I also have a PS4. Add me on PSN, guys. Come on, guys. Yeah, top banana zero seven six nine. Come on. Anyway. Um, <laughs> On my P- PS3, I'm basically using that as, like, media. So I'm using PS4 for games, my PS3 for, like, all my streaming services. I have uh, Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, and uh, HBO Go. I think that's all of them that I have on there. I also have, like, like Voodoo or, and, or Vodou or Vo- whatever it is. Um, but I never use that. But anyway, um, so I use those on my PS3. Each one, like, the, I mean, the actual app on PS3, like, it loads pretty fine, or pretty quickly, but I mean the Hulu one. It's like it takes like several seconds just to load. It it'll it'll load like the background and have the boxes and it'll be grayed out, and then it'll take like a few extra, probably up to five to five to ten seconds to actually load each like the the screens and huh. everything. It's it's really annoying. That's a shame. Maybe that's just a PS3 mm-hmm. app thing. That it may be. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I've I've had that issue with Netflix on Roku before. Oh, interesting. But I, they've updated it a handful of times since then. Um, mm-hmm. The Roku was a little clunky when I first got it. Okay. But it's really smooth now. Nice. So. Okay. Yeah, and I I remember this was probably like a year ago when you mm-hmm. mentioned um, you had a bit of a rant about people complaining about. Ads, ads on Hulu. Yeah, I was kind of a douche about that, but go ahead. Well, but the thing is, I'm with you 100%. Nice. You cannot bitch about three minutes. <laughs> I know. I, it's not even three minutes. Maybe mm. three minutes across 45-minute episode. Yeah. It's it's just nothing. It. Yeah. I, Thank I, I you. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just, it's a little... Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Entitled. There's an entitlement yes. to the complaining. Yeah. Um, yeah, which I mean, I can, I can understand that. I mean, yeah. on, uh, let's see, should, should I go ahead and go next? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. And on that note, I actually like going back to MSD3K. I, I mean, when I was watching that first episode and I had that just rush of nostalgia, I, I mean, I spent that hour and a half basically going on to Hulu not the whole time, but I was going on to Hulu and checking what old ones they had added it, added it to my watch list on Hulu. Went to Netflix, added the, uh, the old episodes to, to Netflix. And I watched like, I watched the first couple episodes of, of the original when I was kind of falling asleep that night. But, um, I also went on to Amazon and created an MST three K wish list that I just added mm-hmm. the DVD box sets to. Nice. Yeah. There's so many of them. The reason I stopped collecting them is because they were so expensive. Yeah. Yep. It's crazy. Yeah. They actually, I believe that they re-released them under shout factory. Oh, okay. And let me pull up and see how much each one is. Cause I think each one's like only like, I mean, yeah, about 20 bucks. Twenty bucks. Really? Each. See, when I was yeah. buying them, they were like thirty-five or forty. Yeah. A pop. Yeah. Yeah. They're like twenty bucks, uh, about twenty bucks each, and each one looks like they have about four, four episodes of four movies. Oh, okay. So that that's that's reasonable. Yeah. That oh, is yeah. reasonable. Yeah. About nineteen ninety-nine on the Amazon for each one. Nice. And uh, and yeah, they have like something like twenty-five box sets. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So anyway, um, and it's funny because like I to kind of go behind the scenes guys to, to my life. Um, when I like on the weekend, I'll sleep on the couch. 
um, because I have my TV and I'll just watch something on TV and fall asleep to it and then wake up. Sometimes I'll wake up and go to bed, but whatever. Anyway, um, <laughs> when I watch stuff, I don't watch it on Netflix because they, they stop you after three episodes or after an hour and a half and they prompt you to, to watch it, which makes sense because it's bandwidth stuff, right. I'm sure. But like Hulu doesn't do that. So I'll watch like – I'll sleep to like three seasons of – not three seasons, but like a season and a half worth of Family Guy or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but having said that, I did have a uh, choice essentially. So I was recommended a TV show, which is funny because Tiny, you uh, say that yeah, you don't like to start a start a show and and uh, move on to something else and have a lot of uh, balls in the air. Um, Let's go with a quick lightning round of shows that I'm currently in. Oh, boy. Yep. Uh, let's see. There is <clears throat> <laughs> Battlestar Galactica, Cheers, um, uh, Cheers, Batman, the animated series. I just started rewatching uh, Master of None, uh, um, um, Gravity Falls, uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. Mm-hmm. And MST3K. Uh, those are just off the top of my you head. You son of a bitch. I know. It is a problem, <laughs> and I really, really need help. Um, <laughs> no, I'm seriously, I'm going to be lame, and I'm seriously going to make a list, and I'm going to I'm gonna really tackle this, because it's, it's, it's a lot of stress. Anyway, um, also, I have two episodes of 112263. Uh, I want to finish up to, because uh, I was rewatching them. Anyway, so... Uh, having said that, I was recommended a show uh, called Flashpoint. Have you ever heard of the show? I feel like I have, but I can't picture it. Okay, so it is a, um, it's a Canadian. Um, you lost me. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. It is a Canadian um, police tactical tactical police drama. That's like an oxymoron it's, and a half. It's kind of interesting. Okay. It's like a, uh, and I probably shouldn't bring it up this this only because I've only watched the first episode, but uh, that's neither here nor there. So Flashpoint is about a, I think they're called the SRU. Um, it's <laughs> basically like Canada's SWAT unit, counter terrorist unit, pretty much yeah. Los Angeles. Yeah. So the whole the show revolves around a team that they they're they're the team that's called in for um, you know high uh, high tension. Uh, like hostage situations, bomb threats, stuff like that. Okay. They're, they're the SWAT unit of Canada. Gotcha. Um, um, <laughs> the only one yeah, in all of yeah, Canada. Right. <laughs> so, uh, one of the stars of the show is my my first my first crush, Amy Jo Johnson. Oh, really? Yes. Um, her, and then also, uh, Enrico. Something he was, who was, I was, I was watching the first episode and I was trying so hard to remember who, where I knew him from. Mm -hmm. Um, and I kept wanting to say that he was, um, oh, what is the guy's name? He does a bunch of Pixar voices. Um, not John Ratzenberger. Um, I was going to say, yeah, I I knew, I knew you were going (laughs) to say that. Um, uh, oh, I, I know his name. He play, funny enough. He played a character in Scrubs named Roger Corman. I think oh, really? named Roger Corman. Uh, Richard Kind. Okay. Richard Kind. Okay. Uh, the dude looks just like him. But anyway, um, I digress because I remembered that I remembered him. Like I looked him up, and as I was watching, I was like, "Oh, that's where I know him from." The 1990s David Spade sitcom, "Just Shoot Me." Wow. <laughs> yeah. You're the one who watched that then. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> And he was also uh, Veronica Mars's dad, which is another show that I've seen a few episodes of, and then and then didn't uh, didn't continue. Wow. Anyway, Flashpoint. It uh, that first episode was pretty solid, pretty pretty enjoyable. Yeah, and um, the funny thing is, is that it's on Hulu, but it's also on Amazon Prime. Huh. So I like, even though I don't care about you know the Hulu ads and stuff, I went straight to Amazon Prime to watch it because it doesn't have ads. Um, so yeah, and, in the first, the first episode was pretty solid. It's uh, about a hostage situation in the middle of a, of a crowded business center area. Um, and it's like the opening of the show is the team, like the, the dude from just shoot me. Um, 
uh, <laughs> trying to talk down like he's the like the hostage negotiator guy. Okay. Um, he's trying to talk down the guy. The guy's just speaking not not Russian, but um, um, oh, some some European language. I, I don't know, but um. And, and then there's like the sniper guy in the team has like his sights trained on him. And then, uh, the guy from just shoot me gives the, gives the order to shoot the guy. And then it flashes back to two hours earlier. And then it shows like the lead up to that kind of that device. Okay. Um, but honestly, like it's, it was pretty good. I'm really kind of anxious to see where it goes because it played with some really interesting, um, it hinted at some really interesting character dynamics and it played with some interesting like um emotional uh reactions to what to what the job that they do um there's a really great scene where kind of the whole episode is about the sniper guys how he how he deals with what what happened at at that at that job like half, the last half of the episode is about him uh internalizing what like what happened um and like they do like kind of the kind of textbook thing, like after like shooting in- incident thing, like the, the interview and everything and then the internal affairs thing. Okay. They have different names for everything though. Oh, so of course they do. Yeah. Um, so goddamn metric system. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So it's, uh, it's really interesting and there's a really like powerful scene where he comes home. Um, and he just hugs his kid and it's like, like I was a little bit affected by it. I was like, this is pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to kind of digging deeper into that and, and seeing, uh, how it goes. It's on Hulu and, uh, Amazon prime. It's, I think it has like five seasons. Does it air on Canadian network? Aired because it okay. ended. Okay. Um, and like I BBC Canada or something. Think, I don't think there is a BBC Canada. <laughs> is I there? I was joking. Oh, okay. There might be. I don't know. I don't know. Who well, cares? I was gonna, I was gonna give you shit about that, but I think Orphan Black is a Canadian show oh, that really? airs on BBC America. Oh. Uh, um, I'm just curious because when you first started, I was like, "Are you sure you weren't watching SNL <laughs> and they're doing a skit about a Canadian right. SWAT team?" <laughs> Um, I just Googled Flashpoint Channel, and I think it was on, like, Ion Television, C. Oh, I've heard of Ion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I'm just, I was just curious. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was on C, uh, CTV. It was on, uh, premiered on July 11th, 2008. It has five seasons and 75 episodes. And, uh. Okay. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I enjoyed it. I, uh, uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'll I'll report back on it at a later date. Cool. So, Tiny, what do you have next? Uh, my last thing that I'll bring up mm-hmm. is um, uh, the movie Atlas Shrugged Part One. Okay. Because I I read the book finally. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're unfamiliar, Atlas Shrugged is a classic piece of American literature mm-hmm. that's highly steeped in political principles, uh, very libertarian leaning. Um political principles it's a lot about like individual liberty and kind of anti-government anti-regulation and um free market economics stuff like that um and it's it's a classic and i've been meaning to read it forever and uh i spent a lot of time in the car at work so i just started getting into audiobooks and Mm. i I listened to it that way um and i i enjoyed the book quite a bit it was I kind of lean that way politically anyway, so it kind of echoed a lot of my sentiments. So I enjoyed it for that reason. Um, and I, I think no one's ever made a movie about it, uh, except until now in 2011. Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, director was Paul Johansson, um, who I don't know if he's notable for anything, but, uh, <laughs> For whatever reason, somebody decided to make it a movie, um, and and I I don't think it was a good idea. It's it's one of those books that's first of all, it's over a thousand pages. It's very long, mm-hmm. um, and I, I'm not kidding you. Sixty of those pages is one man giving a speech over the radio for two hours. Oh yeah, did you? Yeah, did you? You tried to read that before. I had never tried to read it before. I okay. tried to read uh, the Fountainhead. The Fountainhead. Okay, and isn't there wasn't there something similar in the Fountainhead? Like it was like pages upon pages of just a guy's monologue. I think so. For like sixty pages. I think so. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I did give up on the Fountainhead because mm-hmm. um, I, I have a lot of issues with Ayn Rand as a writer, mm-hmm. and so th- those things kind of. Is rub it me Ayn wrong. Rand or Ayn Rand? 
I have no idea. Okay. I call it I, I call her Ayn Rand. Okay. Yeah. Damn Soviets. <laughs> um, she is a Russian. She was a Russian immigrant. So, mm-hmm. but um, yeah. So th- I, I think Atlas Shrugged is just one of those books that it's pretty much impossible to make it a movie mm-hmm. while still capturing the essence of the book. Um, mm-hmm. It's just it's just an unadaptable thing. And they tried to break this one up into three parts. There's three movies. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and so I, I wanted to watch the first one because I was like, I've heard it's pretty crappy. And I, after reading the book, there, I don't think they could, I don't think you could adapt it very well. Mm-hmm. But I got to give it a shot. And so I rented it from Amazon Prime, and yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Um, I I was pretty disappointed. Um, they they didn't necessarily take liberties with the story, mm-hmm. but they took stuff from like later in the book and combined it with the events early on in the book. Okay. So, cause hmm. the book takes place over like 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they kind of did that and it just, it rubbed me the wrong way. It didn't, it didn't give a good progression of the story and the characters to m- mesh those timelines together like that. So that, that rubbed me the wrong way, but I can understand why they took those directions. Um, but unfortunately, um, there's just some really hammy bad acting in it. Uh, um, Grant Bowler is the standout. Uh, he's a a Kiwi. He's a New Zealand actor. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, I'm doing air quotes here, famous <laughs> for uh, the TV show Defiance on sci-fi. Oh, never, okay. never even heard of it. I don't know what that is. Yeah, that was like a, a sci-fi show that like one of the big draws of it was, I believe, when it premiered or before it premiered it had a video game okay that tied into it oh, okay i, I don't yeah. know well if this guy's in it i don't want to see it because he <laughs> is terrible and the worst thing is he's playing my favorite character in the book oh. uh hank reardon he plays mm-hmm. my favorite character and he's just craps all over it he's really bad um so that that's unfortunate the lead uh dagny taggart is the lead character is played by taylor Schilling of orange is the new black fan oh okay she's she's actually good Mm -hmm. i enjoyed her she she pulls off the very little scraps of whatever is good on the script that they give her (laughs) um and and runs with it she she does a pretty good job i i enjoy her she's she's just a really charming actress okay Um, I, I enjoyed her in this. Um, but that, that's about it. It's, it's just a really bad, um, the plot description, if you don't know anything about Atlas Shrugged, uh, railroad executive Dagny Taggart and, uh, steel mogul Henry Reardon form an alliance to fight the increasingly authoritarian government of the United States. Um, which that's kind of the crux of the book. There okay. are these titans of industry who are fighting against the government, against regulations. Okay. Um, and so it's it's this very grand idea of a movie, and I feel like the story is a very grand idea, and they they condensed it into a not grand idea, hmm. which is like the most egregious thing they could have done yeah. with a classic piece of literature. So Damn. it's really unfortunate. Um, like I said, Taylor Schilling is a standout, and I, I did enjoy her a little bit, but uh, it's it's just not good. I don't even know if I could bring myself to watch the other two parts maybe if they were free but i had to pay to rent this so oh yeah yeah it's just not it's Dang. just not good it's a well, bummer that's, that's a bummer yeah that's a bummer read the book though the book's good okay 53 damn hours of an audiobook man i need to get i need to get back into audible cuz i keep yeah. getting credits and i keep not using credits oh you got to use those yes because i've been listening to the dark tower oh um, uh, yeah cuz i have a download of all the dark tower audiobooks but that's neither here nor there <laughs> um but yeah i i i've been just listening to that and i've been listening to music too so yeah um yeah I'll i'm trying to catch up on podcasts right now nice but, by the way tiny yeah anthology launched season two hey at anthologypod.com nice anyway um so yeah that was your last thing my last thing yeah okay cool so i'll wrap things up with um a brief, a brief thing. It's not going to be that uh, that long, but I do want to kind of probably the tag for the episode is going to be something that I'm going to tell you that I don't know if you've seen on Facebook yet or not, but okay. we'll, we'll surprise you. Um, I started like I like three years ago. I mentioned that oh, the Flash pilot episode was really good. 
Never watched another episode after that. <laughs> so I finally was like, you know what? I'm just going to start watching The Flash. I'm like five episodes in. It's pretty good so far. I like the I like the charisma of the main actor Grant Gustin. I think. Okay. Um, he's he's really good in it, and it's it's. I mean, The Flash is a cool superhero. I mean, he's just he's just cool. Um, and uh, I like the because it's not like he's super powered per se. Like he's not. I like the cl- there's a cleverness to the way that he fights the bad guys. Okay. Um and it's it's really it's really fun. I'll report more more on that later. Um also uh, The Flash is also added to that list of of shows. Also, I really want to go back and watch Bates Motel from the beginning again cuz they just aired their se- series finale. Mm-hmm. So that's another show that I want to add to my list. So Yeah. I'm seriously like tonight I'm not joking. I'm going to make a list of all the shows and I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to tackle them one by one. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, I think that's going to just about do it for us, guys. <laughs> um, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. I was recording the whole time. <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, okay. So, yeah. If you guys like what you hear and want to. Are you on Facebook? I'm not. Okay, good. Um, if you like what you hear and you want to support the podcast, please head over to iTunes and leave a rating and review. The more ratings and reviews we get, the easier it will be for pe- for people to find the show in iTunes' search results. And uh, if you want to show your support with your wallet, you can do that by clicking the donate button on obsessiveviewer.com. For a one-time donation or for recurring donations, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer, where you can choose from several different reward tiers. And also, if you want to donate to Anthology, you can choose reward tiers for Anthology. Uh, any and all donations made will help pay the fees to keep the podcast running so we can continue to provide you with our podcast hopefully each week um we have had kind of a a, a staggered release or kind of a kind of a lackluster release schedule recently but i feel like we're gonna get we're getting back on track we're we're gonna get we're, we're getting better guys um next week what are we talking about tiny we're talking about family family um, I don't got friends. I got fam. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be reviewing the fate of the furious. Yeah. Um, yes, a couple weeks late, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> so join us next week for that. And uh, yeah, I think that about does it. Uh, anything you need? Anything you want to say? I don't think so. All right, me neither. Thanks for listening, guys, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks, guys. And so the. The thing at the end here. Mm-hmm. Um, this will be the tag. <laughs> um, did you see this news that Jeff Goldblum returns for Jurassic World 2? Really? Yeah, that's something interesting. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, which we weren't big fans of Jurassic World. Yeah. But I'm curious how they'll, uh, you know, incorporate yeah. him and... Uh, I, I I I wasn't I wasn't a fan of of, of Jurassic World, but <laughs> but 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 uh, I believe the addition of Jeff Goldblum could be could be a winner. That sounded like Jeff Goldblum doing an impression of Barack Obama. <laughs> Did it? Sort of. I mean, it's I the best what, I got. I got what you were going. I got I'm, it. I'm not an impressionist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was my attempt. Oh, God damn it. I'm going to stop. Yeah. Stop me. Yep. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the producer Frank Marshall had this quote to say, I'm excited to have him back. The world has changed a lot since Ian Malcolm went to Jurassic Park, and we need his point of view now more than ever. He told us about chaos theory. He was right. I just, I don't know. I just, we need his point of view now more than ever. <laughs> like, I'm kind of reading into that to mean wow. we're, you know, I mean, granted, I mean, it was one of the highest grossing movies yeah. and everything, but like from a creative standpoint, it makes me think like, yeah, you do because the movie <laughs> wasn't that great. Yeah. Grasping at straws. Uh, yep. So Jurassic World is set for June 22nd, 2018. Interesting. So we'll talk about it next year. Cool. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So that does it. So thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm. Thank you for listening to the Obsessive Viewer presented by ObsessiveViewer.com. You can find more of our episodes at ovpodcast.com, and you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, or your preferred podcast app. The Obsessive Viewer's theme song is An Eclipse of Events and is provided by Loud Like from their EP, Mistakes We Must Make. You can find that and more great music from them on iTunes and like their Facebook page at facebook.com slash loudlikemusic. Any and all feedback on the podcast is encouraged. You can email the hosts individually at matt.com 
tiny or mike at obsessiveviewer.com or send an email to the podcast in general at podcast at obsessiveviewer.com. Check out the Obsessive Viewer blog at obsessiveviewer.com where we post movie and TV reviews and the occasional editorial about the business of entertainment. You can also like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the obsessive viewer and follow us on Twitter at obsessive viewer at obsessive tiny and at I am Mike White. If you want more obsessive content in your life, check out our sister site, obsessivebooknerd.com for book reviews, author spotlights and a general celebration of reading. Finally, if you're philosophically curious, check out Tiny's side project podcast, The Secular Perspective, which explores the concepts of faith, religion, and existence from the perspective of secular hosts. You can find that at thesecularperspective.com and subscribe to the podcast on the podcatcher of your choice. Again, thank you so much for listening. We love you. Be excellent to each other.